Foundations 10. Um, let's talk a little bit about our number system. When you were little and sitting eating your Cheerios in the morning, uh, at some point you learned how to count them, and you learned the numbers that go like this. One, two, three, four, and so on. And you can keep counting forever. Those are our simple counting numbers. These numbers are something that we call the natural numbers. And I always tell people, um, and I'm going to go like this because they keep on going forever. Um, these are the numbers that we naturally count with. Hence, we call them the natural numbers. The natural numbers um, have a symbol instead of writing out natural numbers. And that's just a capital N. Then your little brother came along and said, you know what, I want your Cheerios. And he took them all away, and you learned that there is something called zero. And believe it or not, at that point, you learned that there is another whole set of numbers called whole numbers. Whole numbers are all the positive full step numbers from zero and including zero. Whole numbers are represented by a capital W. So whole numbers don't include any of the decimal stuff that's in between here or any fractions or whatnot. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Those are our, our whole numbers. And what if I do this? Okay, whole numbers start there and go that way. The same with our natural numbers. Now, you know there's more than that. Somewhere um, along the way, um, you heard about these crazy negative numbers. Um, back to this color. Negative numbers, of course, are the mirror reflection of our natural numbers. And we don't have a set of numbers called negative numbers, but in fact, when we put all of these numbers together, and these go in both directions, all of that, we get something called the integers. Now again, capital I, notice that this doesn't include the stuff in between. Integers are these whole num or whole steps from zero in either direction. They include all of the natural numbers plus the mirrored negative numbers on the other side of zero. Those are our integers. Then things get messy because in between one and two there are a lot of numbers. In between one and two you're going to see numbers like one quarter, you're going to see numbers like three-fifths or seven-ninths. Anything that can be written as a fraction like this um, is what we call a rational number. If I can't write it as a fraction, then it's something else. Now, believe it or not, there are numbers we can't write as fractions. Any time, though, that we can take a number and write it this way so that it's something over something, and both of these things, A and B, have to come from, this is an element of, the set of integers, meaning the top and bottom of this fraction have to be from that group of full step numbers on either side of zero. The only other catch is the bottom, this B value, cannot be zero. This is a description of the rational numbers. The rational numbers, which are represented by Q, equal, we need a curly bracket because this is a set. Rationals equal the set of numbers A over B, such that A and B are elements of the integers, and B cannot be zero. There's the set of rational numbers. Now, what's not in there? Because can I write negative 1 as a rational? Can I write it as a fraction? Sure, I can. Can I write 3 as a fraction? Yes, I can. What about 0? Yes. All of the integers can be written as rationals because all of the integers are rational. All of the numbers that you can see on the screen right now are in this set of rational numbers somewhere. So what's not in there? What numbers can't be written? Well, something that we've skipped here that you've uh, used many times and that students want to use instead of fractions are decimals. Now realize, one quarter is 0.25. Three fifths is 0.6. Seven ninths is 0.7. Repeat. 
3 is, if you want to look at the decimal, is 3.0. These are also decimal values, and remember they're all rational. So what kind of decimal is irrational? An irrational number, which is the Q with a line over top of it, these are our irrationals, um, are those numbers that we cannot write as an integer over an integer. There's no way to do it. The kind of decimal that you're going to see um, that is irrational look like, um, let's make one up. Irrational numbers don't repeat. So like this 0.7 repeating up here, this is rational. Irrational numbers don't repeat. They don't terminate. What does that mean? Think about the Terminator. I know it's an old movie, but they don't end. Okay? There is no uh, end to this decimal. Like 0.25, that's the end of this decimal up here. This one, the three dots say, hey, this keeps going, and there, there's nothing repeating, so there's no pattern. They don't repeat, and they don't end. Irrationals cannot be written as fractions made of integers. Now what you're going to see um, as you work in, in this unit is this happens a lot when we start working with square roots. If you punch in the square root of 3, you're going to get a decimal that goes on and on forever and doesn't repeat. There's a really quick introduction to what our number system looks like. Um, something else you might be interested in is this, why can't the bottom be zero? I'll get to that in another video. For now, understand that each of these is inside of the other. Natural numbers were one, two, three, four, and so on. Whole numbers is all of the natural numbers and zero. Integer num integers is all of the whole numbers plus the negatives. Rational numbers is all of the natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and the fractions in between made of integers. Irrationals are all of those stuff that's left over. Hope that makes sense. See you in the next video.